Collins had always been a man of loyalty. He loved Faith with all his heart and soul, and nothing could shake his conviction that she was the one for him. Faith, with her radiant beauty and kind nature, had captivated Collins from the moment they met. She was everything he wanted, caring, intelligent, and supportive. Every day he woke up feeling lucky to have her in his life. Even when business trips pulled him away from Lagos, Collins remained certain that distance could not weaken their bond. As he packed his bags for Abuja, where an important business meeting awaited, he assured Faith that he would be back soon and that his love for her would remain constant. The thought of being apart from her bothered him, but he was determined to make this relationship work, no matter the challenges. Faith, as always, smiled sweetly, promising to wait for him. One evening in Abuja, Collins sat with his friends, Francis, Tunde, and Victor, at a rooftop lounge that overlooked the city. They had finished their business meetings for the day and were relaxing, enjoying the lively chatter and the view of the setting sun. As they sipped their drinks and shared stories about work, Collins' phone rang, interrupting the conversation. His face lit up when he saw the caller ID, it was Faith. He excused himself from the group and answered the call with a smile. Hey, babe, how's it going? Faith's voice came through the phone, soft and cheerful, as they exchanged sweet words. Their conversation flowed effortlessly, discussing their days and how much they missed each other. Collins felt at ease talking to her, unaware of the teasing looks his friends were giving him from across the table. When he finally hung up, they wasted no time in poking fun at him. Francis, always the instigator, smirked and nudged Collins with a playful jab. Bro, you're here in Abuja confessing love to a lady miles away in Lagos. How sure are you that she's not with someone else right now? Collins laughed, shaking his head, but Victor jumped in with his own teasing. Exactly. You're here, being all romantic, while Lagos boys don't waste time. You never know what could be happening. The others chuckled, but Collins refused to let their words get to him. He trusted Faith, and he believed she would never betray him. Still, their comments struck a chord. Francis leaned forward, his voice lowering to a conspiratorial whisper. Come on, man. You're so sure of her, but how can you be certain? You're not there to see what's happening. The teasing continued, and while Collins tried to brush it off, a seed of doubt began to take root in his mind. Tunde, who had been quietly listening, now joined in, his voice light but pointed. Collins, think about it. You're away on business, not there to keep an eye on things. How can you be so sure that Faith is sitting at home, waiting for you? Collins frowned, feeling the weight of their words. He didn't want to doubt Faith, he truly believed she loved him, but the relentless teasing from his friends made him second-guess himself. His heart told him to trust her, but his pride and ego were being tested. Francis, sensing his hesitation, pushed further. If you're so confident in her loyalty, let's put it to the test. I'm heading back to Lagos tomorrow, so why don't I check on her for you? Let's see if she's as faithful as you believe. Collins hesitated. Testing someone you love felt wrong, but the challenge had been laid out, and his friends were watching. Collins found himself caught between two conflicting emotions. On one hand, he trusted Faith and didn't want to insult her by testing her loyalty. On the other hand, his friend's words had stoked his curiosity and bruised his pride. Could he really be so sure about Faith? Could he walk away from this conversation without proving them wrong? His ego was now at play, and though a small part of him knew this was a bad idea, he eventually caved under the pressure. Fine, Collins said, his voice firm. Let's do it. If she passes your little test, I win the bet. But if she doesn't, he let his sentence trail off, his mind too unsettled to finish the thought. Francis grinned, already thinking ahead to how this would unfold. Deal, he said, shaking Collins' hand. 
The bed was set, and Collins couldn't shake the uneasy feeling that followed. The next day, Francis flew back to Lagos, his mind focused on the task at hand. He had known Faith for a while, but only through Collins' stories and pictures. This would be the first time he was meeting her in person. Under the guise of being a concerned friend of Collins, Francis made his way to Faith's neighborhood and found a way to meet her. When he introduced himself, Faith welcomed him with open arms, seeing him as a trusted friend of her boyfriend. At first, Francis kept the plan simple. He just wanted to get close to her, spend time with her, and see how she reacted. They exchanged numbers, met for coffee, and even had casual dinners. It started innocently, but as Francis got to know Faith, something changed. He found himself drawn to her warmth, her kindness, and her beauty in ways he hadn't expected. What began as a simple test slowly became something more for Francis. The more time he spent with Faith, the more he realized how special she was. He began to admire the way she carried herself, how she laughed at his jokes, and the subtle ways she showed care and affection. Francis knew he was crossing a line, but he couldn't stop himself. As the days went on, his texts to her became more frequent, their meetings more intimate. Faith, who had been missing Colin's attention due to his busy schedule, found herself enjoying Francis's company. He listened to her, paid attention to the little details, and made her feel valued. Slowly but surely, Faith's feelings for Francis began to grow. She found herself thinking about him even when they weren't together, and soon, she couldn't deny the chemistry between them. One evening, Francis finally kissed her, and to his surprise, she kissed him back. When Collins finally returned to Lagos after his business trip, he noticed that something was off. Faith was distant, her usual warmth replaced by a coolness he couldn't explain. At first, he thought she was upset about something, maybe his long absence or his lack of attention while he was away. But as the days passed, he realized it was something deeper. She hesitated when answering his calls, gave vague responses when he asked about her day, and seemed unusually distracted. Collins couldn't shake the feeling that something had changed, but he didn't know what it was. He tried to brush it off, thinking that maybe they were just going through a rough patch. But then he noticed how Faith's face lit up whenever Francis was around. The way they laughed together, shared private jokes, and exchanged glances made Colin's stomach churn. He couldn't deny it anymore, something was definitely wrong. One evening, driven by a mixture of suspicion and frustration, Collins decided to surprise Faith at her apartment. He wanted to talk, to figure out what was going on between them, and hopefully fix whatever had caused this distance. But when he arrived at her place, he was not prepared for what he saw. Through the window, he saw Faith and Francis inside, locked in a passionate kiss. His heart stopped. Colin stood frozen, disbelief washing over him like a cold wave. How could this be happening? Francis was his best friend, and Faith was the woman he loved. Everything seemed to crumble in that moment. Without thinking, Collins pushed open the door, his voice cracking as he called out, Faith. Faith and Francis broke apart, startled by his sudden presence. Guilt and panic filled their faces, but the damage was done. Collins' worst fears had come true. The room was filled with a tense, suffocating silence as Collins stood in the doorway, his chest heaving with anger and heartbreak. Faith's eyes were wide with shock, her lips trembling as she struggled to find the right words. Francis couldn't even look Collins in the eye, his head hung low with shame. Finally, Faith spoke, her voice barely a whisper. Collins, I'm sorry. I never wanted to hurt you, but I've fallen in love with Francis. The words hit Collins like a sledgehammer. He felt as though the air had been knocked out of his lungs. What? You love him? Collins stammered, unable to process what he was hearing. Faith's eyes filled with tears. 
I didn't plan for this, Collins. I loved you, but somewhere along the way, I realized that Francis has been there for me in ways you haven't. I didn't know how lonely I was until he came into my life. Collins, feeling a mixture of rage and guilt, blurted out the truth. Francis didn't just show up by accident. We made a bet. He was supposed to test you to prove that you were faithful. As soon as the words left his mouth, he knew he had made a mistake. Faith's expression shifted from sorrow to shock, then to fury. A bet, she whispered, her voice shaking with disbelief. You tested me. Collins tried to explain, but the damage was done. It wasn't supposed to be like this, he said quickly. I trusted you, but they convinced me to test you. I didn't think, I didn't think it would turn out like this. Faith shook her head, tears streaming down her face. So you never trusted me. And now I'm supposed to believe you're the victim here. She stood up, walking toward the door. This is over, Collins. We're done. Francis, who had been silent this whole time, finally spoke up, his voice thick with guilt. Collins, I'm sorry. I didn't mean for any of this to happen. I thought it was just a stupid bet, but I fell in love with her. Colin's fists clenched at his sides, every muscle in his body tensed with anger. You were my best friend, he hissed. How could you do this to me? Francis looked away, unable to meet his gaze. I didn't plan for it, Collins. It just happened. Collins shook his head, his heart heavy with betrayal. I don't care how it happened. You broke our trust. Both of you. With that, Collins turned and walked out the door, leaving behind the two people who had shattered his world. As he walked down the street, the weight of what had just transpired pressed down on him, suffocating him. He had lost everything, his love, his friendship, and his sense of trust. Months passed, but the wounds of betrayal remained fresh for Collins. He tried to move on, but the pain lingered, a constant reminder of the trust that had been broken. Faith and Francis began dating openly, their relationship now out in the open for everyone to see. Collins saw them from time to time, but he avoided them as much as possible. It hurt too much to be around them. He knew he had made a mistake by testing Faith, but he also knew that their relationship had been doomed the moment Francis entered the picture. As he sat in his apartment one evening, reflecting on everything that had happened, Collins realized that the bet had been a mistake, but the real betrayal had come from his best friend. He had lost more than just a girlfriend, he had lost the people he trusted most.